So, I mean, that is a cool thing that I'm trying, that I'm extending is like, yeah. now there's like this group that you've been a part of the podcast, right? Right. Um, I don't know. I'm not even sure where I was going with that. Well, I was and just like, thinking yeah. the network of it. And as I start listening to him and then I'll like see him, right? And I'll be like, oh my gosh, you were on Derek Lake Podcast? No big deal, but I was too. Like, <laughs> 103, episodes, yeah, I own it. 103, you go, go listen, <laughs> give it a listen. No, it's been a cool thing. And like in you, like people ask to come on. Yeah you were like pushing to get scheduled. And I loved that yeah. too. Like I was like, okay, this is cool. Like she really wants to come on. I did, yeah. Um, I what else? What else we got to talk about? I wrote down some stuff. Uh, soccer, interior design, Dixie. I call it Dixie. You call it I Utah mean, Tech. But I mean, do I? I when don't you know. said Utah Tech, I was going to be like, you mean Dixie? Yeah. Well, that's the thing is I've been, I was there when it was Dixie and now it's Utah Tech and it's like. Mm, yeah. It's but, this weird switch uh, over. Everyone knows what you mean when you say Dixie, but if you say Utah Tech, you get the occasional like, what? Yeah. Like Dixie and they're like, oh, okay. And you're like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to use that one, but all right. What else you got? You got any questions for me? I need to start asking people that because yeah. they were, I just sit here and talk to the guests. Yeah, I and mean, they don't think they can ask questions back. How'd you get passionate about safes? Uh, it's money. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Okay. Um, so how safes started was it was a buddy that wanted to get into it, mm. and I was like, "Dude, do it, do it!" Right? Like right. the conversation yeah. we just had, and he was scared. And I've one of my best friends is in a partnership in a business, uh -huh. and I kept telling him like dude, just do it yourself. Just do it. Like you don't need the partner. Just right. do it yourself. Right. And people like to share that responsibility with someone else. I think they mm -hmm. think it's easier. Right. Um, <laughs> it didn't so take, wrong. it didn't take very long. I, someone told me the only ship that sinks is a partnership. Oh, and that's funny. That's pretty much what happened with us. So I came on, I, I, I invested all the money to start it. Yeah. I ran all the business side of it, got our you know, our LLC set up, business mm -hmm. license, got us uh, the lease, everything, all that. Wow. And then we were about six or seven months. Oh, boy. And I had to kind of, like, within, like, month two, I had to, like, kind of step in and start taking over the store stuff. Wow. Um, our margins just weren't there. Prices were too low. Things that were getting sold were even being sold under that. Oh, my gosh. And so I kind of had to step in and reprice everything and... Every time I had to come in and do something, it just caused issues, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think we lasted like seven months and he wanted out. Wow. And so initially he was supposed to buy me out. Like that was the whole plan. Yeah. Like, dude, it'll get you started, get you in the green, get you making money, and then you buy me out. Wow. And so he ended up walking. Well, I paid him a dollar. I think, he, I don't know if there like has to be a monetary like exchange yeah, when you buy so. someone yeah, out. For sure. Um, but in my mind, he walked. Yeah. And then I spent 52 cents on a stamp to mail him a check for a dollar. So. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of money right there. <laughs> I know. So yeah, so I, I ended up, we had a storefront um, kind of by Lip Tricks oh, on oh, the yeah. boulevard. Yeah. Okay. And then I moved everything into a storage unit. Um, I negotiated out of that lease. And then... Um, I was spending a lot of time on my other jobs. Like I have like five jobs. Wow. And so what do you do? Um, I have two contract mail routes is the mm -hmm. big thing because mm -hmm. they have to be furnished six days a week. Okay. So if someone's not out there, I am. Yeah. Um, so I was doing that a lot. Wow. So my day was I'd wake up at six. I'd drive out to Hurricane. Mm -hmm. I'd sort mail. I'd drive to Hilldale. Um, I would deliver them their mail to their post office and then deliver Apple Valley on the way back. Wow. And then I would drive from there straight to the store. I'd run the store from like noon or one, whenever I got there wow. to six. And then when I left at six, I went home and I would, I build custom gun holsters. Oh my gosh. So then I would build gun holsters till like midnight or one. And then I'd wow. do the same thing like six days, six, seven days a week. Wow. And so I just didn't have the time to yeah. like man the store. Yeah. And so I ended up shutting the store down um, and holsters was actually doing really well for like the income I needed. Yeah. And so I was putting a lot of time into that. Mm -hmm. And then in 2020, um, I was like, I had the contract routes all had people doing them. So I wasn't out there as much. Yeah. 
And I thought like, man, I kind of want to open that store back up. Like I've been in retail most of my life, Wow. even though it's, it, I think it's a terrible industry to be in. <laughs> <laughs> and so people ask me, oh, I want to do this. And I'm like, why? Oh, you're like, no, you don't actually <laughs> <Yeah>. stop. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I want to go work sales or, I mean, sales is great, but like yeah. to own a retail store is so much more than what people think, I think. But, oh, yeah. um, but anyway, I wanted to open it back up and then COVID hit like mm -hmm. the same month I was trying to find somewhere to be. Oh man. And from, I mean, and you can ask my wife if people don't believe me, like from day one, I was like, is this really that crazy? Right, you know? Right. <laughs> and so, so I was, everyone's like, dude, you sure you want to be getting into a, a lease contract sure. and all this stuff? And, and I'm like, yeah, dude, if anything, fear kind of drives this industry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, so anyway, I've ended up finding the store, which I've talked about on other episodes, but um, I was actually going to be across the street from where we are Okay. in those storage unit places. Yeah. And it's like a big storage area and a small office. Mm. And I, I wanted the opposite. Yeah. And I was going over there to sign the lease and I saw a leasing thing on mm -hmm. our building. And so it's Shelly Haynes. So I called up Shelly and I was like, hey, what do you have over here? She's like, they're FedEx FedExing me the key today. Come grab the key. Oh, wow. And so I went over, she opened up the FedEx envelope handed me the key. Oh my gosh. I drove over, looked at it, and then I was like, this is, it's perfect, but we'd have to figure out like a yeah. number that makes sense for both of us because I'm pretty cheap over in these places across the street. Mm. So we ended up making it make sense, which I was blown away. Like, I think it was meant to be. Wow. And she's like, when can you move in? And I was like, you tell, I'll move in tomorrow. Like, yeah. you tell me when I'm ready. Jeez. And so, yeah, I just signed another lease. We've been there for four years now I think. when did that uh massive when did that massive safe the big yellow one oh when yeah did that come into play <laughs> yeah so um a lot of people don't know this and I, it's i'll just kind of set the record straight um <laughs> so dixie gun and fish uh. is a gun store in town i've had jake erickson on here a couple times he's yeah. one of the owners down there cool and uh they had that safe there okay so they're actually the champion and superior dealer okay. um for like our area right when I started that store, I was selling holsters in their gun store. Okay. And so I was like, hey, I'm actually doing this. I'm not even sure what it's going to be, but I'm going to bring holsters and safes in. Gotcha. But I'm, I don't want to compete with you with holsters, but I'm going to make them there in the back. Mm. Um, I may have a couple out on a shelf, but like I'm not really going to advertise them. Right. And I had some people bringing in like ammo and tripods and camo and like just be like a shooting store without yeah. guns. Gotcha. And so that was my thought. And then uh, Jake's like, well, dude, I've got some back stock champions and stuff, like just in boxes. Yeah. And he's like, you want to take them over there to fill the store? And I was like, yeah. So yeah. we hauled up all of this stuff over. And I had like four or five Fort Knoxes at the time. And within like three weeks, we sold everything. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, dude, this is a safe store. Wow. And so that's how like the whole safe store thing happened there. They got the market for it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And uh, and with COVID and all that stuff going on, and then the government was just giving everyone 1400 bucks. Yep. Take that. There so we go. were like, what safes can we make 1400 bucks? Yeah. You know? And, and so when we did that, Jake was like, dude, take that yellow safe over because it was in their parking lot and they're in like a little cul-de-sac that didn't mm. have a lot of traffic. Yeah. And so we brought that over which saved me like $700 on one of the monument signs. Wow. So it was totally worth it. Yeah. And now people know us as the store with the yellow safe, not yep. Southern Utah safe and vault. <laughs> well, and even like, I'll, when I, I'll use it, when people are like, where's your store at? I'm like, okay, so you're going to drive right here and, and you'll see this massive yellow safe. And like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm like, yeah, perfect. Right. Awesome. <laughs> well, it's funny the people that don't know it. Right. Like I'll have people come in and I'm like, oh, and we'll talk. And I'm like, yeah, the, you, now you know the store with the big yellow safe and they're like what and they're looking yeah. around i'm like how did you miss that it's like literally i mean it's how like big 20 is that? feet tall yeah i was like that is like a <laughs> massive safe wow. i should measure it because everyone asks me how big it is and i have no it's idea it's gotta be at least it's I mean, tall it's gotta be at least nine i don't even know i'm like in my head yeah it's like 20 feet but i mean realistically i'm not good at estimating yeah so. yeah I, don't, I mean i've stood up next to it and i'm only i go like halfway up it that's I'm six foot so it's got to be a 12, 15. Yeah. Wow. I'm willing to bet it. Yeah. 15. I could see 15. And then it's on a trailer. So it's another like two feet off the ground. Yep. 20 sounds about right. Yeah. So, so anyway, so, uh, 
Tyne Segmiller and Jake Erickson, they own the locker room and Dixie Gun and Fish. Cool. Um, and we just have like a, a split worked out with the champion line and the superior line. So they don't own any of the business, wow. but I basically sell their inventory. Huh. Um, so it makes them look a little better because they order more. Yeah. Um, I help store a lot of their stuff that they have on over, you know, cool. back stock. And then I also I have a forklift and they don't. So yep. they'll bring the semis to me and I unload them all. Well, mm -hmm. Jake will usually come over, but yeah. like it's somewhere to unload. Um, at the sports store, they actually have a little dock. I think they've unloaded there before. But anyway, so, I feel like the people that like, I don't know, you think about business and even coming into this, I feel like I didn't realize it's so much of just, are you going to make your friends? Because that's what you need to do. Yeah. And, and just like developing those positive work relationships and just kind of, I mean, coming into this, it's just you, you need business and you need connections and you pretty much only get to say yes to people for the first like long, long bit. Cause you yeah. just need any business is good business, anything you can get your hands on. So, I mean, right now it's just so many people that come in and you're just like, okay, let me just prove to you that I can be your absolute best friend or that right. I'm actually this great person and so i think it's made me a better person because i'm like, okay i need to be like top of my game i need to like drive better so that if people see me driving they're like this lady is a crazy driver no they're like oh my gosh she drives in the lines good but no yeah. i so we're kind of the same thing like we're not the used car salesman is that what i always explain it yeah. as we're not like pushy like right at a number of times i've talked people into buying a lesser yeah. safe because right. i'm like dude i just don't think you need that you yeah. know like this is probably going to check your boxes and like having that relationship with customers mm -hmm. has put us i mean I, we're the number one safe store in definitely southern like utah the only safe store i know yeah. of, so good job <laughs> i mean there's one in bountiful that i don't know a lot about so yeah. I, I don't know if i want to say all of utah but right. um at least in our area yeah. and i think that's why like we're not we're not pushy mm -hmm. we're we educate like that's the way I, I guess i usually put it but we're friends with everyone yeah you know 